yo, this is the second part of the video where I'm gonna be fixing a track from my subscriber. So in this video, I'm gonna finish the mix. I'm gonna mix the drums, gonna work a little bit on the vocal and do some quick mastering to show you guys how the final track could sound like. So let me show you before and after so you can see uh, what we are gonna be doing in this video. And then we're just gonna start with the tutorial. And this is the mixed one. I still think my version needs a bit of polish in the low end. It's a bit too much, but it's pretty close to being like uh, fully mixed. And you can definitely, uh, with some adjustments, uh, play the track like this uh, in the club. So yeah, that's the intro. If you guys want to get some coaching, all the links are down below. Feel free to book a call. Let's have a chat and be happy to help you with your music. And further talking, let's get started with the tutorial. All right, so let's work on the drums. And uh, uh, it's a lot of stuff. So before I do any processing, I just want to check what we have. And then I might take some stuff out. I might simplify something. So yeah, let me just go through the stuff that we have. So first we have the hi-hat. Uh, we have a shaker. We have two shakers for some reason. I think they were panned like left and right. I strongly, strongly advise to not to do so because it just, it just doesn't doesn't help you to get a good uh, stereo. So I'm just gonna keep uh, the original one. Also, what I feel like is the shaker. It is not really fitting the. the groove so I'll mute the whole thing for now and we are just gonna see what we have here okay a little bit of percussion okay let's keep it like this Uh, we have a top loop. Again, for some reason it is panned. I'm gonna take all the processing out. Show them this. Oh, okay. Okay, so we have a bit of automation. Mm, I wouldn't do so for one simple reason. Because if you want to change the loudness of the instrument, it would be better to do the same thing with utility because with utility, you can automate it on the channel. So I'm gonna take this stuff out and let's do it like this. Yeah, okay, so we have a top loop and uh, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to have this hi-hat because it becomes like too much. You don't need this much. Not sure if I like this loop so much, but uh, let's see. There's another top loop. Maybe I'm just gonna keep one. Again, delete the automation. Okay, so there's a problem that I see here. Those two loops, they're just not gonna work together. It becomes too much. It becomes like a huge mess here. I mean, the first one is sort of okay. We could keep it. Uh, 
Like, it's sort of okay, but mm, I'm not really feeling the loop. Uh, let's see the uh, the hi-hats, maybe the hi-hats a little bit better. Yeah, so I see there's a lot of hard panning. I would not do it this way, to be honest. It just uh, doesn't sound really good. So just try keeping your stuff in center. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but it sounds like there's something off with, with the quality. And um, I hear this kind of stuff even in like um, beatport tracks where the drums, especially like a tech house, they just sound a little bit weird. Like it has some like artifacts. I'm not really liking this loop to be honest. Like, I like the rhythm, but not the sounds. Okay, the hi-hat is cool. I like the hi-hat. Yeah, and then there's another hi-hat. Like, I just don't see the point of using so much stuff. Like, this, the, 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 Amount of sounds that we have is just like too much. Like it wouldn't make sense to use use so much stuff for the drums. Yeah, those two sounds that just don't go well together, in my opinion, just doesn't sound good. The hi hats are kind of okay, so maybe we can try. Yeah, you just have to use one. Like you, if you use more than, more than like two, three hi-hats, especially if you use loops, it's just not gonna sound really good. And you see like, just by, just by reducing the amount of sounds that we have, it is already sounding so much better. I might add a little bit of loops, like from my ends, just to, you know, kind of, Yeah, like technically we could keep those shakers. Yeah, to be honest, not really in love with this loop. Just, no, it's not really cool. Okay, let's do the claps. The clap is nice, I like those. Uh, left clap, so let me solo. See how they go together. Okay, those are different ones, so we can pan them, that's okay. And I would make them slightly more quiet than the original one. Okay, the right clap. Let's do the right one. Ah, oh, okay, so there, there's again, th this is the same mistake that I, I would suggest you, you avoid. Uh, do not duplicate drums like this because you're just gonna get uh, phase issues, like phasing issues, or how, how, however you call this. If you want to hard pan, use different samples. But other than that, it's just not really recommended. It, it, it doesn't help you with the stereo. Like the samples should be different because if you have same samples, it's not gonna work. So I can give you one example. Let's say we're gonna use uh, drum loops. Just use like, mm, hat loops, top loops, drums. Oh, this one is quite good. I'm just going to try um, using some claps here. Mm, 
not the one. Let's try maybe this one. Oh, this one is cool. Okay, so let's keep it like this. Um, and then we can do like, like this. Okay, now we have the clap group, which sounds pretty cool. We can work with that. But to be honest, I'm just not a big fan of panning the claps. Although we could try stereo split. Say this could be zero. This could be zero. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Test the mix a little bit. Pretty good. Yeah, minus 30 is the way to go here, because otherwise it's going to be too loud. Okay, now, um, you could technically EQ every single clap, but it takes so much time that I'm just really not a big fan of that. So let's use the EQ here. I can hear a little bit of harshness. Maybe not so much though. Yeah, around 2K, but it's, it's not due too much. And maybe a little bit here. before and after just makes the whole thing a little bit softer again the point is not to like butcher the sound but just to make it sit in the mix a little bit better you can now hear that the clap just just sounds nice And that's it. Like, we don't really need to do this much, so we can... Yeah, so 700 will boost a little bit of like, natural body, we could say. And we could do just a little bit of uh, low shelf to accentuate this this section, this part of the of the sound. Yeah, that that's it. I don't want to do more than that. The hi hat. I think I'm just gonna keep the way it is. I know the the beat is a little bit basic now. Uh, I like the percussion. Yeah, this loop just it it just doesn't fit. It just doesn't fit. Okay. Uh, let's work a little bit with the claps. I'm gonna do my cool ninja technique. So pay attention to this. So what you want to do, you want to find the frequency in the clap that um, could be a little bit harsh. Like, you know, we're gonna make the clap slap and like smack a little bit more, all right? So what we're gonna do here is let's use, I like pumping ratio for uh, 41 for the start. 
auto release. And you're gonna hear how that sounds. Yeah, I like it around. Let's make it a bit more. Something like that. And then let's adjust the There's a massive difference really here. And by doing so, you can accentuate the and using different algorithms also helps a lot. Adds a bit of extra smack to the claps. But to be honest, I like the pumping a little bit more. Gives a nice character to the clap. I'll try about 40% release. Oh, I think 3000 or like. Check it out. Now you can see that the compressor is a really powerful tool, like it's insanely powerful. Also pay attention that I'm not really boosting the gain here. I might do like a little bit, but the point is to accentuate the, the smack of the clap, right? And remove a little bit of this harshness. Okay, let's try the claps without the... Um... Let's try without. I think the release should be a bit shorter. Yeah, I think it's around 2K. Cool. Okay, what else can we do? Okay, for the hi-hat, um, I'm just not really feeling the, I mean, it's, 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 it's okay, but like this looks super weird. I'm not liking this hi-hat. I mean, it could work, but I'm just, Let me try another one because I'm not really feeling the one that we have here. Um, drum loops. Let's try this one.
I think this one's a little bit better. Uh, let's filter out the lows because there's a lot of mud in here that we really don't need. Then a little bit um, like this. You don't want to do too much because otherwise this part is going to get accentuated and um, it's going to be too harsh. So I just want to find the, the sweet spot for. Okay, and then I want to accentuate the this section a little bit. And I'm not really liking this um, like super harsh. Yeah, this one nah, just doesn't sound good to my ear. Yeah, like I sometimes, <laughs> like I'm a bit surprised how people make those top loops. Because some of the stuff is, I don't know, just like for my ear, it's a little bit too harsh. I like the idea of putting like something on the downbeat, but I don't know, it just sounds too, a little bit too much for my ear. Okay, that's gonna be, and we can also try I think this is pretty cool. I want to double check my kick. Let's reduce the saturation just a little bit. Or maybe. I mean, it really depends on, on how you want to track, you want your track to sound like, as long as it sounds good on different systems, which we are basically just checking right now, right? So it could be. Yeah, like, you know, everything is cool. Like, it just sounds good. So we can check here in the car. So from here, you just have to design how you want it to sound, right? I just did how like I imagined this track, but then again, it might be a little bit different from how other producers may seem may may see the track. But just like this, it sounds pretty good. Okay, uh, let's do the group processing on the drums and uh, I'll take care of the vocal and a little bit of uh, final processing. And that's gonna be it, because um, the track is pretty simple. I, you know, I fixed the, the main part of the track, so the rest is gonna be like super simple. Let's 
do let's do the um, group side chain on the drums. Okay, so here I'm gonna do some heavy side chain first, and then we'll see the right attack and release timing. Let's also do a bit of side chain here. So basically, everything that is below uh, 60 hertz, the compressor is not reacting, so we're not side chaining that this much. Yeah, now it's good. So you can see that we can shape. I kind of like between. I think 15 is good. You can see that with different algorithms. use a different um Now we can decide how much side chain we want. I'll try 75. Yeah, so that gives us a pretty nice groove to the to the beat here. Tweak the kick a little bit here. Yeah, like you would really have to test that. Again, I'm just going by by my ear and experience, uh, but this is pretty close to being like uh, really well mixed. So it's, it's gonna sound good in the club. So you can see no like boominess. It is not like too bassy. Uh, I might have compressed it a little bit too much on the lows, but that's okay. It's like for now. It Okay, and let's do a little bit of saturation, just a bit, because when you're using samples, when you're using samples, quite often they, 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 have, um, they have processing. So be careful when you are using compression saturation and stuff.
I just want to add a little bit of character to my to my drums. Uh, let's try all tape maybe. Okay, and we can try mm, envelope follower and we can do like and the same for the drive to to give it a bit more you know a bit of character because if we decide to uh, how do you bypass everything at once? That's without. I'm not going to touch the high so much. I think it's already pretty good. If I make the highs too saturated, that's gonna sound harsh. I don't want that. Okay, um, I don't wanna do too much to the drums here, really. We can add a bit of crunch with the... Uh, Everything below 60, I'm just not going to touch because this is just um, low end information that is not going to help us. That's it. And we can mix like seven. To keep a little bit of the dry drums in the original character. Pretty good, huh? So what else could we do? Because I, I don't want to make it like too long. We could try a little bit of transient shaping. time maybe medium nah smooth is really nice let's push it a bit more let's push about maybe even less than that like 40 percent pretty good okay and then uh uh, what else? Because I want to finish this up with... Um... I mean, we could try a bit, bit more compression still. Just to make it groove. So... Um... Ah, wait. There's, there's one more thing that I want to do. A little bit of clipping. So, a standard clip. It's nice to do after the transient shape. So, just... Just the peaks. Uh, pay attention to the drum group. J 
Just the super loud peaks, I'm not trying to squash the drums too much, especially considering that these are the loops. And let's use a really uh, long attack. I like the virtual MU, this one is quite nice. So uh, auto release, long attack. We just want to shape the drums a little bit and give it a bit of character. It's very subtle. You can see it's really subtle. Oh, this one is quite nice. It gives a bit of punch to the drum. So like, there's so much stuff that you can do with different compressors. So this one is a little bit more like vintage. This one is... Right, so we could bypass. I kind of like this one. Nah, I think it's too much. Let's do... This one is cool, and maybe we can try. Nah. I'll just try a neutral. Like, you can play with that. I don't want to spend too much time on that, but. Yeah, like it's it's already sounding good. Okay, and the last thing for today is gonna be the vocal. So for the vocal, what I noticed is uh, it had so much processing on it that I just wasn't really sure whether it's like a good idea or not. Let's let's have a listen. It just sounds it sounds uh, a little bit weird to me. So we have. Uh, one time, one time, rock to the rhythm. So let's take a look at the processing. <laughs> so this is, uh, avoid that. This just doesn't make any sense. One time, one time. Um, then the next one is gonna be the compressor. I'm just gonna take it out, it's not really needed. One time, one... What else? The next one is also kind of weird. So right, the, the EQ. And one time, one time. So I'm just gonna take it out and that's it. One time, one time. And since it's a pretty aggressive vocal, one time, one time, to the rhythm. I want to do uh, the FET compressor. Oh, it's too much. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, there's so much more that you can do to the track, uh, but uh, yeah, I feel like it's it's sounding pretty good at this point. Obviously, like I would, uh, you know, shape it a little bit more, but let's do that with, um, let's do that uh, with uh, some, some multi-band compression. And, uh, 
there was also like synth synth Lithian, but I'm not feeling the uh, this stuff. Like, one time, one time, oh, the rhythm, the bomb, come on, two time. It sounds not Tay Housey to me, but the rest is cool. Like there's definitely some room to improve here. And we could arrange the track in a nice way as well. But yeah, let's uh, rub this up with. Um, one time, one time, rock to the rhythm, roll to the rhyme, come on. Two times, two times, everybody move your feet. One time, one time. Let's also take out the uh, processing from the drums just so you can hear. One time, one time, rock to the rhythm, roll to the rhyme, come on. Two times, two times. Let's do it like this. One time, one time, rock to the rhythm, roll to the rhyme. Yeah. So here, depending on one time, one time, rock to the rhythm, roll to the bar, come on, two times, on how much and how processed you want your drums to sound, time, you just play time, with that. I decided to not compress the to not to compress it too much, but Okay, let's shape this with a multi-band compressor and then we're gonna wrap this uh, wrap this up. So one time, one as usual I'm gonna do the sub processing here. Like this will really depend on the track, uh, but let's start with this. One time, one time, back to the rhythm. You one time, really want to control the sub. Usually it's gonna be short attack, short release. This one is also really important. Longer attack. Take it out. One time, one time, rock to the rhythm, roll to the bar, come on. Two times, two times, everybody move your feet high, come on. Three times, three times, rock. One time, one time, rock to the rhythm, roll to the bar, come on. Two times, two times, everybody move your feet high, come on. Three times, three times, rock to the rhythm, roll to the bar. One time, one time, rock to the rhythm, roll to the bar, come on. One time, one time, rock to the rhythm, roll to the bar. Yeah, so you can hear it sounds pretty good. And then we can take care of the rest of the mix like this. Also keep in mind that I'm obviously doing this like in the context of this video. If that was like a real mix and I had, you know, a lot of time to spend on it, of course, like I would do uh, a little bit more, you know, with, with the drums, with, um, with processing. But just by looking at my workflow, I hope that you can understand how to do uh, uh, all this. This one I want to make a bit longer. So you can hear. Let's shape that with the last band. the 
we can compress it. Yeah, super nice and clean. And then finally, let's do the um, the master compression here. So mastering really long attack, uh, auto release, fast release, and then. That's it, so here we go. Here we have the final mix. So yeah, this is basically the foundation of the track. The track I feel like needs a little bit of work, but yeah, hopefully everything that I did uh, makes sense to all of you guys. And uh, let's, do, let's do a little bit of final testing. This one is a little bit tricky. But you can hear it actually, sounds good. is also up front because quite often what could happen is that you you would have um, uh, the vocal and it's just like drowning in the mix but here the low end is just about right pretty balanced That will sound good in the clip, trust me. Like, I like that. Ah, yeah, we didn't limit the track as well, so you can you can push the track a little bit more, like. Okay, so that's gonna be it for this tutorial. I hope you guys learned something from this video. I'll be making more of these. I have um, uh, quite a few people who messaged me who wanted to get their tracks fixed. So yeah, I'll be releasing more of these and see you guys in the next one. Bye.